Hello, welcome back. Well, relations between Russia and the U.S. have been steadily deteriorating for the last 12 months. The situation was made worse in August when Russia invaded Georgia. Moscow claimed to be defending two regions that wanted to break away from Georgian control, but its actions were internationally condemned. And even before this conflict, the U.S. had begun implementing plans to set up a missile defense shield in Eastern Europe, provoking an angry reaction from Russia. As Barack Obama was being elected, President Medvedev threatened to deploy Russia's own missiles along the Polish border to neutralize the program. Well, Washington has dismissed any notion that the upcoming naval maneuvers in Venezuela are a challenge to its influence in the region. In reaction to the moves, the U.S. State Department said, I don't think there's any question about who the region looks to in terms of political, economic, diplomatic, as well as military power. I don't think a few Russian ships in the Caribbean with the Venezuelans is really going to raise anybody's eyebrows. Well, we're still joined by our guests in Washington, D.C., Michael Shifter, and in Moscow, Dmitry Trenin. Uh, Dmitry, if I can come to you first, that reaction uh, from the White House that uh, nobody's eyebrows will be raised by this. Uh, in reality, how closely will the U.S. be watching what happens in this region? Well, I think the, the, that question sh should be addressed to uh, my colleague in Washington. Uh, I think that the expectation here in Moscow is that Washington will pay attention. And basically, uh, the, the whole reason for this symbolism is uh, to bring it home to the United States leadership that, uh, you know, um, provoking Russia in its own neighborhood is, uh, is no sound policy, is no basis for uh, a solid U.S.-Russian relationship. So just how far you would Russia Georgia. go? For example, do you think uh, it would ever be conceivable that Russia sticks um, nuclear missiles in Venezuela? No, I, I think it's nonsense. I don't think Russia will do that. Uh, Russian, uh, Russian nuclear forces are entirely on Russia's own territory. I don't think that uh, that's going to happen. But let me let me say uh, something that is uh, very very at, at the very top of the mind of the Russian leadership in in Moscow, uh, Georgia, which uh, basically attacked uh, its uh, its uh, breakaway province at that time and. Uh, uh, killed a number of Russian peacekeepers in the, at, in the process was a U.S. ally who was armed by, by the United States and its allies. And from the Russian perspective, it's the Georgians who started the war. It's the Georgians who uh, attacked the Russians. So this alliance between, uh, de facto alliance between Georgia and the United States, I think raised more than eyebrows in Moscow. It uh, sent a message, uh, a wrong message in my view, to, to, to the Russian leadership that somehow the United States was trying to ring Russia with its um, allies uh, using hostile uh, countries or hostile governments in, in, on Russia's periphery as its uh, allies slash pawns, like the government in Ukraine or the government in Georgia, that it was deploying U.S. Uh, um, uh, interceptor missiles in Poland or the Czech Republic with uh, uh, potential impact on the Russian nuclear deterrent. All that uh, came as a, as a huge, uh, um, well, the, the Georgia attack came as a huge surprise to the Russian leadership, and I think that they were extremely, extremely concerned about U.S. goals in, in, uh, in the former Soviet Union. And this is Let what's happening in, Ve in Venezuela is a desperate attempt by the Russians to basically call the attention of the U.S. to the um, to the games that big powers are playing in each other's backyards. I think that's an interesting point. Let me put that to, to Michael. I mean, the, uh, arguably, Russia is justified in searching for strategic alliances. Uh, it's got to look out for its own interests. The U.S., has, after all, has, uh, has NATO, and it's got its uh, Eastern European defense shield. So uh, Russia's actually just looking out for itself. Well, I think that's right. Uh, the, the problem is that you have <clears throat> you have a country like uh, like Venezuela, whose government I think has been uh, embarked on a mission to challenge the United States, and uh, I think that's where the concern comes in. I think the Russians' role in the Western Hemisphere, in Latin America, in, in and of itself, is not not an issue. The world has changed. The Monroe Doctrine, uh, where the United States controls everything, is, is long gone. China's a big player, Russia, Iran. Uh, this is the new reality, and Washington has accepted the reality. The problem is, if the deterioration in U.S.-Russian relations and Russia uh, uh, flexes its muscle using Venezuela um, uh, 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 through Hugo Chavez, 
Chavez, who is a figure who has really uh, said some pretty uh, hostile things about the United States and has challenged U.S. power, then the level of concern becomes uh, goes up. And, but, but isn't and it the U.S. is fault? Should, should the U.S. have spent a bit more time cultivating relationships well, with not, Latin I'm America? Not, I'm not a, well, no, absolutely. I mean, I, we've been calling this for this a long time. I think the United States has been completely distracted and preoccupied, and takes Latin America for granted. This has been the uh, this has been the problem that the United States has this attitude that Latin America is its backyard, so it doesn't have to pay much attention, and it hasn't realized uh, that the world has changed, that there are new actors, new players, Russia being one of them, but there are others as well, and Latin American governments across the board, uh, not just. Hugo Chavez, but Brazil and Chile and, and, and Mexico and others are looking for new partners. And there are others that do see opportunities in Latin America where, like, the United States uh, hasn't. So hopefully this will be a wake-up call for the Obama uh, administration coming in, uh, really not to take Latin America for granted, but to try to develop some of the opportunities uh, that the region uh, affords. And the United States will be, uh, can begin to be also uh, a significant player. But the others uh, will remain involved. Russia's not going to leave, and China's not going to leave. and. Uh, uh, this is the new reality, and the United States uh, needs to understand and accept that. Yeah, it's interesting, gentlemen, because this is something we were talking on the program uh, uh, yesterday, uh, global trends, which say in 20 years' time, American influence is, is going to decline and other powers are, are going to rise. Uh, Dimitri, uh, this idea of a, a multipolar world, uh, is that what Chavez and Medved ever hoping for? Well, th that's what that's uh, that's what people have been talking for a long time. I think that the multipolar world uh, can actually be deciphered as a world in which the United States is uh, reduced to the level of a quote unquote normal great power. This is not likely to happen anytime soon. The United States will continue to be as the as the uh, principal uh, uh, player, a uh, power among the powers, if you like, uh, in this world. But uh, it, it's interesting uh, when uh, uh, you and Michael were discussing the situation in Latin America, there's uh, something like uh, an echo in, in, in the part of the world where I'm sitting right now. Uh, you, you, people say Chavez in, in, in Washington, people say Saakashvili in Moscow, and basically they have the same problems with the uh, local leaders uh, that are openly hostile. Uh, to the big power uh, in, in that part of the world. You're talking about the, the world that has changed, and clearly uh, there are many players uh, uh, that will not go away in the former Soviet space. Uh, look at the pipelines, look at, uh, uh, look at the trade patterns, uh, look at Central Asia, look at Ukraine, look at, uh, look at the Caucasus, look at even at Belarus. All the former republics of the Soviet Union are pursuing what they call themselves multi-vector policies, and those policies uh, uh, are linked to, um, uh, to uh, th those policies basically uh, reach out to countries like Europe, the European Union, the United States, China, Turkey, uh, Iran, India, a number of others. So and when, when uh, we do live in a very different world. So when it comes to, to Russia and the U.S., does that mean Medvedev is no longer interested in, in improving ties with the U.S.? No, I think that he is very interested, and uh, that's what he said. And I think that uh, what the Russians want is, uh, uh, is a new deal, if you like, in, in their relations with the U.S. What they want is uh, some kind of a recognition by the U.S. of Russia as a serious major player with its own legitimate interests. Uh, uh, not necessarily in a, in, a, in a certain, in a given geographical area, but more broadly. For example, look at European security, which is now built uh, uh, around uh, uh, the European Union and NATO, and mm. Russia is, uh, is not part of that. And so they, they, they want to be anchored in some way uh, on a more or less co-equal basis. Look at, uh, look at the strategic arms relationships. Uh, look at the relationships with the, uh, with the countries in the neighborhood. The Russians want a new deal. The Russians would do lots of things to just to attract the attention of the United States. If anything, those uh, uh, naval vessels, those, uh, uh, the strategic bombers that had preceded them uh, to, to Latin America uh, were carrying one message to Washington, D.C., pay attention, start looking at us as a serious uh, 
strategic player and uh, and let's discuss uh, what we can uh, what we can do together and let's uh, let's okay. uh, try to resolve uh, the problems that we have quick word to Michael will uh, America pay attention will Barack Obama pay attention to that message I think he's going to be forced to. Uh, I, I think he's going to. I think there's a recognition that the United States has paid a tremendous cost for being so uh, obsessed, uh, distracted, preoccupied, uh, and just ignoring uh, Latin America. That this is uh, a region that's been fundamentally transformed. That offers lots of opportunities. There are new players, and I think um, no one believes that Latin America will be a priority for the Obama administration. But uh, I think it's realistic to think that they will have a different attitude, a different mindset, and, and will uh, be focused more selectively uh, on issues in Latin America that I think offer lots of opportunities. Okay, we'll have to leave it there, but it's, uh, it's been a, a, an entertaining discussion. Thank you both very much indeed. Michael Shifter in Washington and Dmitry Trenin in Moscow. And thank you for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story. Until next time, bye-bye.